All right. Pig's blood, prom night, and telekinesis. You know where we're going with this. <laughs> Gary, you got it. But uh, haven't we seen this story a few times already? I mean, we have the original movie. Oh, yeah. We have the sequel. We have the Matrix TV movie. And then there was that remake. Oh, yeah. Back in 2013. So why do we need another Carrie adaptation? That's the thing, right? It seems like Carrie just keeps coming back over and over again. Why? What is it about Carrie that resonates so much with audiences? What keeps bringing us back to the story? Exactly. And it's more than just a horror movie. There's something about it that a lot of people find relatable, even if you've never had you know, pig's blood dumped on you at prom. Right. I mean, who hasn't felt like an outsider at some point? Mm. Who hasn't felt that frustration of not fitting in? But Carrie takes that feeling and just cranks it up to a whole other level. She's not just bullied. She's tormented by her classmates, by her, well, you know, extremely religious mother. It's like this pressure cooker of, like, almost inescapable intensity. Oh, that's a good point. She's getting it from both sides. You know, she doesn't have a safe space. No wonder she eventually snaps. Exactly. It's a mm. pressure cooker just waiting to explode. And speaking of explosions, let's talk about the director for this new Carrie series, Mike Flanagan. Okay. Yeah. This is a guy who knows how to create suspense. He knows how to create truly terrifying atmospheres. Yeah. So for anyone out there who's not familiar with Mike Flanagan's work, I mean, he directed Dr. Sleep, the sequel to The Shining, which... Is not an easy movie to make a sequel to. Right. And then he's also got Gerald's Game, which is a Stephen King adaptation that will get under your skin. Well, let me tell you. And then if you want to talk about original series, you got The Haunting of Hill House, Midnight Mass, essential viewing for any horror fan. Yeah. And, you know, what's interesting about Flanagan, especially when he's adapting King, is his ability to really get into the characters' heads. He doesn't just focus on the scares. He goes deeper exploring their motivations, their traumas, their deepest fears. Yeah, like in The Haunting of Hill House, each episode was like peeling back another layer of this family's history. You saw how their childhood trauma was shaping their adult lives, and, you know, they had these really complex relationships with each other. Right, exactly. And he's able to weave these really intimate character moments into this genuinely creepy and unsettling atmosphere. And now he's describing this new Carrie series as a bold and timely reimagining. What does that even mean for a story that I think already feels pretty relevant today? That's the question, isn't it? I mean, obviously setting Carrie in the digital age opens up a whole world of possibilities. It's not just whispers and notes pads in the hallway. It's cyberbullying. It's social media shame. You know, that constant scrutiny and pressure that comes with being a teenager in today's world. Oh, man. High school's tough enough without having your every move documented online. Exactly. So just imagine the prom scene. Oh, right? uh, yeah. Everyone's got their phones out, recording every awkward moment, every cruel prank. I bet Flanagan will film that whole sequence in one long, unbroken shot. You know, trapping us right there with Carrie as the tension just keeps building and building and building. Right. There's no escaping the horror. And speaking of Flanagan, he's not afraid to take his time with a story. He builds suspense slowly very methodically, letting those unsettling moments just linger. So how do you think he's going to approach the scope of this new Carrie series? I mean, it's a pretty contained story. It's not like The Dark Tower, which, you know, Flanagan has talked about adapting, and he has said that The Dark Tower would need, like, a massive scale to do it justice. Do you think there is even room to expand the original Carrie story? Oh, I definitely think so. And that's where the potential for this reimagining really comes in. Like, what if we go even deeper into Carrie's psyche, you know? We could explore her trauma, her fears. We could even look at the subtle ways that her powers might have manifested before prom night. Ooh, that's interesting. Like, maybe we see glimpses of her dreams, her anxieties, those little hints of what's to come. Exactly. <laughs> so we're not just watching the spectacle of her powers. Mm -hmm. We're experiencing them from the inside out. We're feeling that pressure build right alongside her. Mm -hmm. And this is where Flanagan's expertise in crafting these really intimate psychological moments, that's where that could really shine. It's not just Carrie, though, right? we got to talk about her mom, Margaret White. Oh, yeah. One of the most iconic horror movie moms. Definitely. But also often portrayed as like this one-dimensional religious fanatic. I feel like Flanagan could do something really interesting with that character. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Margaret White is ripe for, for some deeper exploration. You know, if anyone can delve into the darkness and twisted motivations of a character like Margaret White, it's Mike Flanagan. Think about Midnight Mass. Oh, yeah. The way he explored faith and fanaticism. Right. He didn't shy away from the scary side of blind belief, but he also made those characters feel real. Yeah, relatable. Yeah, exactly. So... 
You know, imagine seeing the world through Margaret's eyes, understanding the traumas or fears that might be driving her actions. I mean, it wouldn't excuse her behavior, but it could make her a far more complex and terrifying antagonist. Yeah, the scariest villains are the ones that you can almost understand. Uh -huh. The ones where their actions have some sort of twisted logic. Exactly. It makes you question your own beliefs. And that brings us back to what makes Carrie so adaptable, so timeless. Yes, right. You yeah. know, it's not just about the horror elements. It's about those universal themes that resonate with us even decades later. That feeling of being an outsider, being bullied and misunderstood, grappling with intense emotions that you don't know how to handle. And you've all been there. Right. And Carrie takes those feelings and throws them on this grand, horrifying stage. Exactly. And what's really interesting is how Carrie can also be seen as this lens through which we can examine these really relevant modern day issues. You mentioned cyberbullying earlier, but there's also this pressure to present like a perfect image online. Oh. You know, this fear of being judged or canceled yeah. for every little misstep. It's like the pressure cooker of high school has been amplified by like a thousand. <laughs> totally. <laughs> because of social media. I can see Flanagan doing some really unsettling things with that. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, think about how that constant scrutiny, that fear of public humiliation mm -hmm. would impact Carrie's already fragile state of mind. It adds this whole other layer of psychological torment. Yeah, and since we're talking about psychological torment, we can't forget the technical possibilities that a series format offers. We have a lot more time to explore the story, to delve into the characters' inner worlds. Yeah. Think about Flanagan's slow, deliberate camera movements, you know, just lingering on Carrie's face as she's struggling to control her powers. And the sound design. I mean, Flanagan is a master at using sound to create this sense of unease and dread. Oh, yeah. You know, just imagine those jarring, distorted noises, the subtle whispers and creaks that make you feel like something terrible is about to happen. Oh, chills, literal chills. But, okay, we've talked a lot about what Flanagan brings to the table. What about Carrie? What makes this story ripe for another reimagining after all these years? I think it's because Carrie taps into something fundamental about the human experience. It's about the pain of rejection, the longing for acceptance, the struggle to control forces that seem so much bigger than ourselves. Yeah, we've all felt like an outsider at some point. Yeah. And Carrie just takes that feeling and turns it into this nightmarish experience. It does. But even though the story's full of horror, there's also this underlying sense of tragedy, you know? Like, you really feel for Carrie even when she's unleashing her powers. Yeah, there's empathy there. There is. Yeah. And that's what makes Carrie such a powerful and enduring story. It makes you look at the dark side of human nature, the ways that we hurt and betray each other, but it also reminds us of the importance of empathy and understanding, you know, recognizing that there's pain beneath the surface, even in the most monstrous actions. And, you know, ultimately, that's what I'm most excited to see in this new adaptation. I really think Flanagan has the talent and the sensitivity to explore those deeper themes mm. in a way that's really going to connect with audiences today. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be talking about this new adaptation for a long time. You know, it's crazy to think that Carrie almost didn't happen. Really? Stephen King almost threw the whole thing away. Wow. He was convinced it was no good. Oh, Luckily, yeah. his wife, Tabitha, yeah. she saw the potential mm. and encouraged him to keep going. It's amazing how many great stories probably never see the light of day. No, right? <laughs> because the creator just gives up. Yeah, good thing Tabitha had faith. Right. And speaking of faith, let's go back to Margaret White. Okay. I mean, her brand of religious fervor, scary stuff. Oh, absolutely. But it also makes you think about the dangers of blind faith. Right. And how easy it can be twisted into something really harmful. Carrie is more than just a horror story. It's a cautionary tale right. about how unchecked power, whether it's religious, social, or even supernatural, mm -hmm. It can corrupt. It can destroy. Absolutely. So with this new adaptation, do you think we'll get more of Margaret's backstory? I hope so. What led her down this path? Yeah, I mean, if Flanagan can show us the human being beneath the fanaticism, you know, the pain, the fear that might be driving her, that would add so much to the story. Right. It's not about excusing her actions, but understanding them. Exactly. And it makes her even scarier. Yeah. Because, like, they say, better the devil you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But let's get into some of the technical aspects of horror, the that. stuff that gets under your skin yeah. and just stays with you. I think sound design is going to be huge in this new Carrie series. Oh, for sure. Clanigan is so good at using sound to build suspense, mm. to create this unsettling atmosphere. 
Think about it, those jarring, distorted noises, the subtle whispers, the creaking, just this constant feeling that something terrible is about to happen. Okay, seriously. Chills. Right. I'm getting chills. Visually, how do you think Flanagan is going to use, like, lighting, color, camera work to create that signature, you know, unsettling feeling he's known for? Oh, man. So many possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, those long, lingering shots. Yeah. The use of shadows and darkness, mm -hmm. creating a sense of claustrophobia, of unease, you know, like you're trapped. And then when Carrie's powers start to manifest, oh, yeah. objects flying around, the walls are shaking, you know, maybe we see these distorted reflections of Carrie as her powers surge. And Flanagan loves those long, unbroken takes. Yeah. It's going to be like, we're right there with her. Experiencing it in real time. No escape. And speaking of escape, one of the things that makes Carrie so compelling is that it plays on these universal anxieties we all have. Those feelings of vulnerability and isolation. Yeah, we've all felt like we don't belong at some point. And Carrie just takes that feeling and turns it into this nightmare. But even though it's a horror story, there's also this element of tragedy. Oh, devil. This empathy for Carrie, even when she's, you know, going all telekinetic on everyone. Right, we understand her pain. We understand her anger. Yeah. You know, even if we don't condone her actions. Yeah, and that's what makes Carrie such a powerful story. It's a story that makes us look at the dark side of ourselves, the ways we hurt each other. Uh-huh. But it also reminds us of the importance of empathy, of understanding, of recognizing the pain that's beneath the surface of even like the most monstrous actions. That's a good point. And I think that's what I'm most excited about with Flanagan at the helm. Yeah. I think he can really explore those themes yeah. in a way that's going to resonate with audiences today. So we've reached the end of our deep dive into Carrie, but I want to leave you with this. What part of Carrie resonates most with you? Is it the high school drama? the mother-daughter relationship, or maybe it's the whole telekinesis thing. What are you most curious to see in Flanagan's take on this story? Keep those questions in mind, and remember, sometimes the scariest stories are the ones that hold a mirror up to ourselves. Until next time, happy diving. <laughs>